the computer whole thing. Okay. Okay. So when you're doing a repair request, you want to be super specific. If like, uh, let's say instead of evaluate the roof leaks, because the only thing the seller has to do is look up and say, yep, no roof leaks, it's fine. That's evaluating. <laughs> you want to if make sure you verify if your buyer uh, wants a licensed HVAC, HVAC person coming out or a licensed electrician or exactly what they want. So, um, you know, what, how I would have worded this is, you know, have a roofing company come out and evaluate uh, the leak in the right southwest corner or something like that. So that way you get a report of what they're doing. Compress and fluff, fluff up the insulation in the attic. So you're going to compress it down and then you want them to fluff it up. So you get the exact same thing it is right now. I mean, this is just unbelievable. So, you know, as a realtor, you need to watch what you're putting in here. <laughs> Evaluate the water penetration in the garage. Repair if needed. Oh, no repairs necessary. I evaluate it. You know, fix lower cabinet and kitchen. There's a lot of cabinets in the kitchen. You know, if it's like a loose bolt, fix a tighten screw in lower left-hand door underneath kitchen sink. You know, you want to be really specific. Um, clean dryer vent, no. If your client asks you to put that in the, um, in the repair amendment, tell them no. Tell them, I'll go clean it for you. I'll pull it out and I'll clean it for you. <laughs> you know, but I'm assuming that this agent is probably asking for them to maybe, because dryers don't come with the house. So unless the dryer's staying, this agent is maybe asking to get a company out and clean the uh, vent that goes from the dryer to the outside of the house but it's just not worded right, you know? So if that's what she wants, she's not gonna get it because she put clean the dryer vent. So I just wanted to show y'all um, this and when you're making repairs, so you are, let's say you're representing the seller, you want to um, document everything that's done. You wanna take pictures before and after. Pictures were, will be in the inspection report. So that's usually your before. So once the repair is made, you want to take a picture of the repair. If you're uh, fixing the repair yourself, you want to save the receipt for, uh, for the items that you bought. And you want to send that as proof that the repair was done. If you hired somebody to come out and um, fix all this stuff, you want them to give you a detailed list of what they did. But um, yeah, so this is a very big don't ask for repairs this way. And if you need help writing up repairs, um, I, I have no problem writing up repairs if it's that time and you're representing a buyer and they want some done repairs. I'll help you. I'll walk you through on how to word it. But a lot of times, if you word it exactly how it is in the inspection, it's pretty detailed. And that might, you can just like copy the inspection report, that little section and, and place it in there. So that was one. Um, another thing I wanted to show y'all Pictures on a listing, okay? Pictures are the most important thing because they get your client out to your property. These are the exact same pictures. They were on the MLS, except I edited it, the ones on the right. The ones on the left, you know, when I'm looking at this picture as a buyer, I think, oh man, that's gonna need a lot of work. And it just took a little time to edit the trash can out in the driveway. You want to get them to your house. You want them to see your house. We're not changing that. You know, we're not false advertising. We're just editing the picture. Same with this. Same house. You edit the cars out. You don't want any cars in your pictures. You don't want trash laying around. So I just cut it out. You just want to see the house. You know, some realtors will even like... Um, take out electrical lines and power poles. I think that's false advertising. I don't do that. I don't recommend doing that. If the house has a power pole in it, leave that power pole in there because it's gonna be there. There's nothing people can do about that. So don't edit the, that out of the picture. But just, you know, don't, 
don't put this on the on the MLS without doing a little bit of editing. Same here, same picture, and I just cut out the cars. And it made a world of difference in the listing. This one, I just cut out that person and focus more on the water because this property is by the water. If you're in the bathroom and you're taking pictures in the bathroom, uh, you want to lower the lid. You don't, nobody wants to see a raised toilet lid. You know, take all the shampoos and soaps and all that out of the shower. You know, I've even gotten in there and scrubbed my client's uh, shower door to get the water stains off of it. it. You can move everything, just put it on the floor out of sight. And then when you're done taking the picture, you can move it back. You don't want waste baskets. You don't want the, you know, waste baskets in the picture of the bathroom and dirty towels kind of laying around. The same thing with the kitchen, move everything off the counter. If, you know, off the microwave, everything should have been moved off the microwave here. All back here, all of this, you can store it in the dishwasher or under the cabinet or even around this corner until you take your picture and then you put it back. You know, it just takes a little bit of time, but it's going to be the difference between somebody looking at your pictures and say, that house is too much work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother with it. Or, hey, you know, let's go check this one out. Hey, Jace. I saw Jace for a little bit. Say hey, Mimi. So that's the main thing I want to tell y'all about uh, requesting repairs, what not to do. Pictures, take a little bit of time and edit your pictures before you put them on the MLS. And if um, you're not a good picture taker or you don't have time to edit it, hire a photographer. You know, you can get um, rock bait. I use rock bait. They're like, I think the minimum package is 100, 150. You know, not that bad. They'll come out. They'll they'll do the pictures, but you have to go to the house. If your client's not going to get it picture ready, you can meet the photographer there and you can take everything off the cabinets because rock bait won't do that, but they have the good angles and they know the lighting and all that, but you'll still have to meet them there and, and prep if your client's not going to do it. And then the second, uh, the third thing that I that came up was, um, if you're representing the seller and the buyers get an inspection, you don't want to see that inspection unless your client, the seller, asks for it. The buyers paid for it. They don't have to share it with you. And if they share it with you and this sale falls through, you have to disclose everything on that inspection report. So you don't want to see the inspection report. You know, if the uh, buyers are asking for a lot of repairs and the seller says, okay, I want to see the inspection report and the buyers are willing to share it, give the seller the choice and let him know, okay, we can ask for it, but if this sale falls through for any reason, we will have to disclose that entire inspection report. We'll have to uh, disclose it out there and let him have the choice if he wants to take, if he wants to look at it and take the chance of maybe having to disclose it or not. So um, yeah, and a lot of times if you're representing the buyer and you ask the listing agent, hey, do you want me to send you the inspection report? If they've been doing real estate for a while or they know what they're doing, they'll say, nope, <laughs> keep that report. I don't want that report. <laughs> So that's the main thing is uh, pictures, need to edit your pictures. Don't ask for the inspection report if you're representing the seller, unless the seller chooses that you, um, chooses that you can, but give him the choice. Don't take that choice away from him. And then, well, the, um, the repair list, what not to do on repairs. Okay, so those were the three things that came up this week. So now we're going to jump into transaction desk. So transaction desk. I am going to go back to the beginning of Matrix uh, so y'all can see how I get to transaction desk. So these are our, our listings. We're going to pick a house. Um, this house right here, I'm going to copy the MLS number because we're gonna need that. Uh, this house is in Dove Island. I think that's Livingston uh, County because we'll need to know that. 
Okay, so we're going to go to transaction, transaction desk. And we're going to create a new transaction. So do y'all want me to do it as we're um, representing the buyer who wants to buy the violin or we're representing the seller who wants to list the violin? Which one would y'all prefer to see? Buyer. Buyer. Okay. So we're going to create transaction. The name, you can name it whatever you want. So I usually put, um, can't close. You can see what mine are named. Uh, like Germany listing, Texas Street. And a lot of times you'll have more than, you'll have the, they, your seller will sell and then they'll also buy. So I always put like the last name and listing and then last name uh, purchase, you know, so that way I know if it's the buy or if it's the sell. And so we're going to create a transaction and I'm going to put um, ELP buyer training, G-R-A-I-N-I-N-G, -I 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 buyer training. Okay, so that's what I'm going to name it. Uh, oh, you probably need the address up here. And this is just for your information. You can name it anything you want. I have pre-made templates out there. So as soon as you um, click on it, it will import uh, your checklist, what documents are necessary. It'll import all the forms. So we're going to do a buyer's template. And as you can see, I've got a lot listing. So that's the undeveloped property. I've got the lot purchase, residential leases, and uh, residential listings. So we're gonna do buyer's template. We want to import the data. So we can use the HAR MLS number or we can use the uh, tax number. Since I wrote down the HAR number or copied it, we'll just use that. And we're the selling agent. So if you're listing the property, you're the listing agent. If you're representing the buyer, you're the selling agent, which is really confusing, but that's just how it is. So, and we're gonna create. Now, at any time, if y'all have any questions, you can stop me if you need me to do something else. Or did y'all have any questions over um, the pictures or survey or the uh, um, corrections? No questions. No questions, okay. So this uh, imports all the information that's on the MLS. The property type is residential. It's 1999. There is a lot in block, so you're gonna to have to fill it in. So this is lot number 51, nope, 39 through, 39 through 42, block 51. You don't need the page and plat. Uh, the more information that you can put in all of these blanks, the more filled out your forms will be. So we're gonna say we're offering 170. Okay, and hit next. These are the dates. So, oh, I want to go over the CDAs with y'all as well. This is the date it was listed. If your offer has an expiration date, you would put that in here. Um, you know, I haven't used that hardly at all. I don't think I've ever submitted an offer where, you know, the, uh, the client will say, well, this offer is only good for 24 hours. They don't take it within 24 hours. You know, we're out of here. You know, so that's what the expiration date is. Offer date is when you send it in. We'll say, Oh, no, that's the expiration date for the listing. This is the offer expiration date. The acceptance date is going to be the date that it was executed. So we're going to say it was executed today as well. The day of closing, we're going to give them 30 days to close. So we'll do March 1st. And on that date, March 1st, we're going to make sure 
the date we pick is not a Saturday. It's not a Sunday. And if it's a Friday, we're going to get there first thing in the morning. We're not going to close at three in the afternoon because the property might not fund and our client won't be able to move in until Monday. And they're going to be really mad if, you know, they're stuck without a house because the house, property didn't fund because we closed late on Friday. So try not to do any Friday closings if you can. Funding date, that's funding is when it funds. So that's going to be the same as the closing date. Title commitment date and application date. So normally nothing, we don't fill that out. I mean, you can, but I never do. And it pops up all these little things and you're going to, you're going to delete it because um, I happen to be the listing agent on that. So we're going to keep that selling agent, whoever is creating this. So if you were creating that, it would pull in your contact as the selling agent. But since I'm creating it, it pulled in my contact. Um, do we want to keep it as a selling agent? No, we'll do somebody else. So we're the listing broker. We're going to take us out as the selling broker. I'm going to delete whichever one doesn't have all the information on it. Looks like they all have the information on it. So we'll delete this one. This is a blank one and it's for the buyer. So if you're working with a buyer you have used before, you would just click add and you want to add an existing contact because he'll be in your database. This blank one comes up uh, because transaction desk is assuming that this is a new buyer who you've never worked with before. And so all you would have to do is edit the information. You're going to add it to address book and save. But I am going to go ahead and delete that and add somebody I've worked with before. So we're going to add an existing contact. Con uh, a thief. We'll add him. Save. You also, if you have the lender information, if you know who his lender is, you want to add that because it will fill in the forms. If you um, have a title company you use all the time and um, you want to add that in, it'll fill in the forms with the title company. I always pull in the title company I use, even if I'm asking them to pay for title, because you know if they want to go back and amend it and say, you know, no, the seller wants to you to pay for title, you know, or, or you got to change it to our title company, then I'll change it. But I always pull in my title company and ask the other party to pay for it. That's just something I do. So we're going to add um, capital. All right, so we'll add capital title and we're going to go ahead and throw in a lender as well. Oh, and this is the good uh, lender. Lender and um, since I deleted myself as the selling agent because I'm the listing agent. I'm going to add somebody as the selling agent in the selling brokerage. So we'll let Adrian be the selling agent. And it doesn't have his. Uh, if you get their license number and put it in there in the um, ID, which the, I don't think the ID is going to be on par, it'll fill it in for you. So it might not be a bad idea to just go and we're going to do a um, search. We're going to do a search for Adrian Martinez. 
All right, so search. Okay, so we got his MLS ID and we have, that's the office ID. His number is right here. AMM. And we will add a broker. Let's see if I can see a broker. Amerisource. We'll do Amerisource as Adrian's broker. Amerisource is now defunct, so we'll just put in fake numbers. Okay, so we have the lender, we have the title company, we have the buyer. It imports the listing agent and the listing broker and it would have imported the selling agent because I was creating it, it just imported it, my stuff twice, so I deleted it. These are all the forms that it's going to come in. If you want to clear it out some, you can. If you know that, um, you know, he's not using third party. He's going to pay cash. So you can you can delete that form. You don't need it. Um, what else? We're not going to use um, seller's disclosure on lead based paint. We don't need that because the house is not old enough. So we're going to delete that. So you can go through and delete the forms that you don't need, or you can add the forms. If you there's one that you don't see and you want to add it, you add it here. And then this is the documents. Um, it'll bring in the CDA in which I've got in touch with Transaction Desk today. And I, I think I'm really close about getting that fillable. So y'all will be able to fill it out and it won't come in on the document section. Um, and then it has a moving guide that you can give your client. You know, that's that's really cool. And on the listing side, it has listing stuff that you can send your client. And then you hit done. So these are all the forms that we just picked. It pulls in a checklist. It pulls in tasks that you need to do. And then these are the documents. So, um, if you pull up the form, it should be pretty well filled out. That one doesn't need anything. We're going to open another form. Uh, we'll do We'll do the offer. We'll do the offer. Okay, so the uh, seller's names were not on there. So what you can do is you can look on the tax roll and you can get the seller's names and add them. You don't wanna leave it blank or you call the agent and um, get the seller's names. Ask her, hey, you know, give me the correct spelling. I'm, gonna, I'm going to send you an offer. And it's really good to call the agent before you start doing all this or before you go on a showing and say, hey, you know, I'm just checking on your property. I'm gonna show it tomorrow. Do you have any offers on it? You know, and they'll tell you if they have offers on it. You don't want to bother showing a house that has three offers on it. It's just not going to be worth your time, not unless the client just insists that, you know, that they want to see it. So you've already established a relationship with the agent because you're calling her before you even see it to say, hey, do you have any offers on it? You know, I always say, do you have any offers on it? And what can you tell me about it? And they'll give you a little bit of information. But when you're ready to write the offer, you call her back and uh, you get the correct spelling, John Doe, of the clients. Because you want to give her 
a contract that's completely filled in. You don't want to give her a contract that, you know, she has to change. Oh, it didn't bring in the sales price. Normally it brings in the sales price. So we're doing 179. Um, we're not going to leave any blanks. So we're putting NA there. Earnest money, they're going to give, um, earnest money does not have to be 1%. Everybody will tell you it has to be 1%. It does not have to be 1%. It can be whatever your client wants to give, but the standard is 1%. So we'll do, um, we'll do a thousand, which is a little less than 1%. Zero NA. We're going to ask the seller to pay for it, and it filled in our title company. It's got the date up here, title policy. So the amendment to the title policy, I know I've covered this a couple of times. Um, this little section, this is really for the survey. If the survey is short on something, um, like if the survey left something out and the title company is now on the hook for uh paying to move a building that was over the line, but the survey said it was in the line or, you know, something like that. If you have this checked, then the title company's on the hook for cleaning that up, whatever it is. But if it's not checked, then they're not. So that's either or, and this is usually, you know, very little. Uh, it's probably about 5% of 1%. So, you know, on a, a on a um, $179,000, it's probably like 60 bucks, 60 or 70 bucks. For the survey, if it's cash, uh, you don't have to have a survey because there's no lender involved. So it's up to your client if they want to request the survey, we'll have them request it and we'll say 10 days and it's gonna be at the seller's expense. Um, you never want to put dates in here like 21 days or anything like that. Residential, you can add to it. Residential for mobile home or residential, my client wants to raise chickens. Residential to raise chickens. So this will give you an out if you get the uh, HOA docs back and it says you can't raise chickens and you're past your option period, you know, you've got this out because you're buying it. It's in the contract that you're buying it to raise chickens and you get the um, HOA documents 20 days in, you know, and now you learn you can't raise chickens. If you just had residential there, your client doesn't have an out, but your client wants to raise chickens and you have to raise chickens. So yeah, you have an out. Leave this date blank because this says buyer must object the earlier of the closing date or blank days after the buyer receives the commitment. Since we're representing the buyer, we're gonna leave it blank and we're gonna object before the closing date. So it just gives our buyer some more time. The property is in a HOA. Buyer has received the uh, seller's disclosures. Buyer accepts the property as is. We'll ask for a $550 home warranty. Closing March 1st. Buyer takes possession upon closing and funding. They don't need a lease. Special provisions is NA. You could put here if um, you work a deal with your client and you like say, okay, well, if you use me to uh, buy and sell, if you use me to sell your property, I'll give you 1% back on uh, the purchase of another property. So in special provisions, you could uh, put realtor to contribute 1% of realtor or fees to buyers closing costs um, 
to buyer's closing. Now with this, you have to get that uh, the amount approved by the uh, lender and you have to have the other side also agree that you can contribute to the closing. You cannot contribute to their uh, down payment, but you can contribute to the miscellaneous fees. So you can put something like that in here. Whatever goes in here has to relate to this contract and you cannot put something in here if there is a trek form that you can use instead. So we'll just leave that there or you can put in A if there's nothing to put there. We're gonna in A or zero. You wanna get the seller's information from the realtor and uh, put that in there. We're gonna do a 10 day option at $100, that's kind of standard. The option fee will be credited to the sales price. And then it has all the information, the realtor's information, and it's 3%. Um, and then you hit save. So you're going to do that on every one of the forms. We're going to back out. Uh, so once you do that on all the forms and you send it off to your client to get signed, um, go to forms. We're going to go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I'm sure y'all have all signed this when you signed on to the brokerage because I used AuthentiSign, so you might be familiar with it. So we're going to send these off to get signed. And we're going to hit sign in AuthentiSign. The participants are going to be Mindy Flint, Mindy Flint, and I don't see Evan Lloyd properties. We'll do that would be good. Add. We're gonna have Mindy sign on all. Okay, this little icon means that this Mindy Flint is only set up as a uh, reviewer. So right here, you're going to say how the people are going to sign it. If they're standing right by you, uh, it's going to be an in-person signer. If you're emailing it to them, it's going to be a remote signer. A reviewer would be if you want to send it to, um, you know, myself or Chad to look over before they go to your client. Then you can hit review and uh, CC only would be uh, like to the title company or to um, the lender after everything's executed. Okay, and if you want it in a, a certain order. Selling agent, let me plan. That's going to be in detail. So we want it to go to Chad first because um, he's going to review it. So you're going to put sign in for, uh, in order, and then we're going to go to participants. And you can move these up and down. So let's say this is Chad. We're going to go to Chad first so he can review it. If he rejects it, it's not going to go to the second person. But if he says, yeah, it's good to go and he accepts it, then it automatically goes to the second person for their signature. And then after that person signs it, if you had the uh, listing agent right here, it would automatically go to the listing agent once your client signed off on it. And so you don't have to worry about getting it and forwarding it to the listing agent after your client has signed, because if she's up here and you just have CC only, as soon as your client signs, it'll automatically go to her. This is where you can add the documents you want to um, you want to have them sign, or you can take some off. So you know, if 
there's something in the document section that you want to bring in, like um, the CDA. We're going to bring in the CDA. So the top part is the forms of this transaction. The bottom part is going to be everything in the document list. So we're going to bring in the CDA because it's a document and we want to bring it in. Uh, we want that to be the first, you can arrange them. We want that to be the first document. And then design is where you can add these signature lines if uh, you need to add a signature line. So we're going to put the CDA's document. It's not going to auto populate with anything. So we're going to add um, drag and drop. So we're going to add the initial here. We're going to add, where's the sign here? These means optional. So if you have initial optional, that means they don't have to, uh, like we'll do this one. This one is optional. This blue one's optional. So when they're filling this out, they can click either one. They don't have to click, you know, both of them, but either one. Uh, we're going to initial, and then if you want them to fill in text, you would do text, and that's open for them to fill it in. Markup is where you can make changes. So if you want to, um, you want to fill it in yourself, we're going to mark it up right here. John Doe and Jane Doe. So uh, whoever you're sending this to to sign won't have to fill it in because you're filling it in. You can um, that's where you can sign it, but why isn't it like Mindy? I'm gonna trash it. If you want it to sign it, we'll do. Mindy, but it always looks so bad when you use that pen. <laughs> that's just dumb. So that's this is if you need it to mark something out. We're going to do this. OK, so on the CDA, guys, uh, when you're turning this in to get paid, the only thing that I care about is um, your agent name, your license number, your phone number, what fee plan you're on, the property information. This entire center part right here is just, uh, let's get the pin out. This is just for your information. I do need the sale price because we do want the sale price. You know, like I have all these dates down so you can put the execution date down. And then as soon as you do that, you write down the option end date. And it's just to help you keep up with the different days because you need to be aware of, of these days. So I don't need every single one of these filled out for you to get paid, but it's just for your benefit if you write down the execution date and then 10 days later, you know, you put down the option end date because if you're going to terminate the contract, it has to be before five o'clock at that option end date. And then your third party finance has a, an end date as well, and you can't miss that. So these dates are really important. So this is really to kind of keep you on track. I might revise this later because I've had a lot of feedback and I don't think anybody likes filling all these out. Is that, is that the consensus that I'm getting? Yeah, we're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you don't have to fill all these out, but it's just for your benefit. So I might revise it, but I am working with Transaction Desk. I did get a hold of somebody today by email. I haven't spoken with anybody, but I finally got the right department to where they can uh, go in and put this in the form section to where you don't have to go and add all this, you know, initial, initial. Uh, and then you just want to make sure that everything is uh, right. You know, these are all... Oops, See, that didn't pull in the sales agent information. So you, you, you would want to redo it because this needs to be filled out, but we're not going to redo it. And it looks like everything else is good. And then you're going to hit next. So this is to the get them to sign. 
Now customize the email is each person. If you want, if this is say, let's, this is going to Chad because he's going to review it. 136 Dove Island, Dove Island. Please review. You can type in a message just for them. And then let's say this one's to the title company after you've got it in a line side, sign line order. And the title company is going to be the last one, you know, if you're the last one signing and you do the execution, this would be more if you're the seller. But uh, so we're going to put it to the title company. Let's pretend this is title company. And we'll just put open title on 136 Dove Island. Please call me if you have any questions. Okay, and, um, and then you send. That's all you have to do, you know. So we're gonna go to the email, because I should be getting it. Hey, Barbara, there's your picture. I had to look for your picture off of your email so I could do uh, your business card. I don't know why it was blurry. I'll have to look at look at that again. Yeah, it was just whenever I would try to blow it up, it was just still really blurry. I wonder if it was just because it was too small. Sometimes it takes a little bit to to get the authentic sign to pop up. So we're going to exit out and see if we can open it back up. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start signing. This is what your client is going to walk through. This is what they're going to see. So, and you will get calls of them saying, I don't know what to do. What do I do? you need to walk them through this. So you tell them to hit the start signing button. Um, I've done this before. Normally it gives you the option to uh, pick your font, you know, pick your signature style and font. And so you wanna walk them through that since I've already done it there, it didn't ask me. But, you know, then you'll tell them, yeah, just pick a signature and click next. And, uh, then you can just click start and it takes you to the first one. So we initialed it. This is going to be optional. So we're on the flat fee property address. They have to type it in. And then it's just uh, next, next, next. Is that it? Is that all the signing blocks? Next, complete. Yep, that was it for that one. Now, since I didn't sign in order, I should get the second one. Let's try to exit out again. That's telling me that I had a client sign it. This is the other one. So we're going to do start signing. What happened? I thought I clicked start signing. All right, we're going to start. And then you tell your client, just wherever you see something yellow, click on it. Complete signing. And we're done. So then it'll, after it's completed, it will automatically send a something like this to your client and for them to download the completed transaction. 
So just make sure you tell them that. Uh, since they haven't signed before, it's going to ask, uh, do you want to put a password on it? And that's just uh, to password protect that file. And I always tell, you know, if you want a password, put one. I usually say, no, just hit enter, leave everything blank because they you'll password protect the file and then you'll forget about it. OK, so uh, now if we go to AuthentiSign, we should see that, OK, Mindy Flint sign, Mindy Flint sign, we're good to go. And we can go to, I hit this pin over here to go to AuthentiSign, and that has all the signings. Like this little signing right here means um, it was never started. And there's another, this means it was started, but it wasn't completed for some reason. So the ribbons mean everything's good. This one started, but not completed. And this is, you know, never started. So it might, you might want to go through and clean this up every once in a while. So we're going to go back to the transaction. And now everything that we just signed is going to be in the document section. So let's go back to the main transaction again. And the only thing that I did is click on go to documents. You know, you have all the contacts here, uh, all the dates that you put in. So this is really good to help you with your dates too. The documents, you've got your tasks. This is different tasks. So let's see what tasks um, schedule inspection or have buyer sign waiver. You know, that needs to be done, but it's tied to where you are in the process. So these are just little reminders um, to help you not forget stuff. So task and then we've got the checklist. This is how you're going to submit documents for review. The documents that are mandatory will say mandatory, and it tells you the percentage of, um, like if you've only uploaded two of your mandatory documents, you know, it's two out of four, it would be 50%. So it tells you the percentage of the documents that you've uploaded. So right now we need the uh, buyer's template, uh, the CDA. So we're gonna attach it, you hit attach, we're going to go to uh, select from documents. This is the transaction. So we're going to do the CDA and click OK. And now it's submitted for review. Same with the IABS documents. And I know it's going to be here somewhere. There we go. Click OK. Now, if you have like um, this file, let's say you have one client and uh, the buyer's rep. That's a good one. You have a client and um, he put in an offer on another house. He put in a, a, about a month ago. The buyer's rep on that transaction is still good. You don't have to have him fill out a new buyer's rep for this transaction, you know, because your buyer's rep would have like Livingston County, don't put neighborhoods, you wanna put like Houston or Harris County and Harrison contiguous counties. You wanna put something like that to where it's a broad scope to where you're not limited to uh, Cyprus. You know, you're gonna help your client look for a house in Cyprus. You don't wanna do that. You wanna do uh, Harris, Montgomery and contiguous counties. You know? So we wanna pull out the buyer's rep in that other transaction we can go to documents and we're going to go to uh, all the other transactions and we'll pull it out of Imperial Oak. That's the one and OK. So now we've got that buyer's rep that he filled out for the other offer we put in on that house and it's submitted. Um, same with the general seller's info. We're going to attach that, but I'm not I'm not matching up the right files. So there is um, and we're going to attach. It's 
certificate is just the signing. We'll we'll do that one. Wait. We'll do that one just to have something there. If uh, let's say you have a transaction that has five amendments because it was a tough transaction, you can add, you know, a, a checklist item. You know, so there's one. This is amendment one. There might be more amendments down here. No. So we're going to add a second amendment. It's a document. <laughs> Amendment two. Or, you know, if you want to put a price amendment or if it's a listing, you know, you might have a lot of price drops if people start out really high, you know, a price drop amendment one, price drop amendment two, you know, name it accordingly so you know what it is. Um, so you've got it's amendment two. We're going to add it to the buyer's template and save. It's probably going to be down here, right there. And you can rearrange these, move it up to how you want it. I like putting all the mandatory stuff together. It's so now they're all submitted for review. And I will show y'all what it looks like on my side. Office transactions. Nope, that's not it. Review documents. Okay, so I have the ELP training ones. I'll pull it up. <clears throat> yeah, oh, that looks good. It's missing a signature. I'm rejecting it. It's um, missing one signature. And then I'll go to the next one. Set. looks good and I'll do this for each one and the CDA I'm gonna have to sign that one I got to figure out how to do that. Um, that one's rejected. The status is still open. So we're going to change it to pending because now the, the file is in pending status. So if I go back to, I get notification that, uh, that those documents were submitted. So these, this is my email notification that the documents were submitted and ready to review. So um, whenever you submit it that way, it'll notify me, which is good. That way I don't have to pull it up every single day and look and see if there's any documents to review. I'll get it on in my email. So where we go again? We're going to go back. Okay, so the one document, um, Agent new by Oh, I changed it to pending. That's why. Okay, so I need to see what the broker said. Oops. This one's rejected. Why is it rejected? There's at least one signer missing. Okay, so now I know I'm going to upload a revision because now I got that signer to sign off on it. Okay, it submitted it again. And then um, see it's 31%, so it's waiting for that one We'll go, let's see if I get it this way. Uh, 
Okay, this is the revision. Uh, click here to review this document. All right, it looks good. I see you added the signature, so I'm gonna say it looks good, save. And then it's all complete. Now, uh, the good part about Transaction Desk, so let's say you have the title company. Title company emails you the title commitment, which you're gonna have to add to the file. They'll email you the, um, They'll email you the uh, receipt for the earnest money. Trying to, okay, this is a settlement statement. I wanna get this settlement statement into my file. So I am going to go to um, that transaction. Where did I go? It says it's fully approved. There we go. So I'm going to go to that transaction. We're at Dev Island, pulling it up. This email right here, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to copy this email. So I copy that. I go back to the title company's email. This is, uh, you can do this with anything. If you have, uh, like, pictures of the listing, you can uh, email it to the document section. If you have emails with the client that you want to keep, you can forward those emails to the document section. So I'm going to forward this HUD statement. I'm going to take out my picture and all my information because I don't want to save the email. Um, I just want the HUD statement. And I'm going to send it to that transaction file. So I just forward it to the transaction and it's going to pull it into the document section so I can upload it because um, the settlement statement, the HUD settlement statement is like a mandatory, uh, a mandatory item that you're going to need. So we'll go check the documents. It takes a little bit to get there. Let's see if it's got there. Not yet. Um, while I'm waiting for it to pop up, sometimes you gotta go back out and in. Uh, while I'm waiting for it to pop up, this fact, so each time you create a transaction, it automatically gives you a fax number to where, um, I had a client that was in the uh, service and he was stationed in China and this came in handy because we could work by fax. He, his, something was wrong with the email. I can't remember what it was, but he had to fax everything. So you, this fax sheet header is assigned specifically to that transaction. So if somebody says, you know, they need a fax number or do, do you have a fax, can, you know, can you fax it? You can create a transaction and uh, use this to, and, and they can fax it to you and it goes directly into the document section. This is unlimited storage and you don't even, it doesn't have to be just for real estate. Like your, I've used it, uh, let's see, documents. So these are my folders. These are your personal folders. And um, like this is a house that I had my own personal house and I used it for different stuff. I was going through a divorce. So I just send stuff in here. I mean, pictures, you could, it's just unlimited. If you're, um, whatever, you, whatever you need to, to do with it, miscellaneous files. So that's just different stuff that I've added that I can pull into the document section. And you can like, if you want to get on word and create, this moving guide, if you want to take this moving guide and create it just to uh, your clients and like take out all state and just put your business card on it and save it 
and then you can upload it directly into the documents to where when you pull up or create a new transaction, it's going to add it into the documents each time. So, and it can be, you know, specifically tailored to your clients. It doesn't have to be a corporate, just the corporate stuff. So that's something for you to be aware of too. And let's see if that document's in there. Yeah, see, there it is, the HUD settlement statement. So you just click this email, copy it, and whatever you want to put into the documents of this, of this transaction, you just forward it to the email. Now, if I wanted to forward it to another email, let's say I want it to forward it to this one, you know, it's the same thing. Go, copy, and then it's forwarded it into, into this document section. Now, you can create folders to keep your documents straight. You know, like you can create a folder, we're gonna add a new folder and it's gonna be called waiting for signatures. Okay, so we know these three, we're going to uh, move, uh, nope, we're not gonna merge. Oh, merge is so great. Oh, I'll have to show y'all merge. We're gonna move to uh, the waiting for signatures file. You know, we know all of these are ready to send for review. So that's in our, you know, uh, ready for contract compliance. Seller signed documents, waiting for signatures. You can create any kind of folders that you want. I usually have like a miscellaneous, um, I'll do MIS files. And then all of these little ones that are uh, certificates, you know, it'll say uh, like this email, sign contract, fax back, cover sheet, no, that stays. Uh, once you get the documents signed, they'll put certificates down here uh, showing that it's signed and I'll move all that into the miscellaneous, miscellaneous files. If you have, um, we're gonna go back to training because I'm going to mess up my real files. Um, if you have two files, you have your survey in one file and then you have your T47 in another and you wanna put them together. You're gonna to check both of it, hit merge and uh, the name for the new file is gonna be T47 and survey. So you still have those two files, but then now you have the new one, T47 and survey. So to make it cleaner, I would move these two. I wouldn't delete them, but I would move them to um, mis miscellaneous files. Uh, back to home. Close. Where did, oh, this one doesn't have miscellaneous files, does it? That was on the other one. Okay, so I'm gonna move these to miscellaneous files. And it kind of cleans it up for you so you know which ones to submit and not to submit. Um, sometimes you'll get an agent who will email you the, um, the contract, the MUD, the, um, their IABS and their brokerage information, along with some other files that you don't need, all in one PDF. So you can email that PDF into your transaction. We're going to, uh, okay, so we're going to pretend this is that PDF. We're going to click on it and we're going to not merge, there is a slice. That is the best thing, slice. We're gonna slice it. So we have 10 documents and we only need three. So we're gonna get rid of 
we're going to get rid of that one and that one and we'll keep this and we're going to save it we're going to save as we're not going to replace it um and whatever it is if you just need the um let's just say this is the contract by itself and you took out all of their brokerage information i don't know why agents do that but they will send you like their IABS with their client signed and you know um so you still have the old documents you still have the T47 in, sur in survey that's the original right was that the original and this is the new one no I I hit save too many. That wasn't the original. So I hit save after I, I moved it. Let's try it again. We'll do. We'll do this one. We're going to slice. And we'll save it as one sheet. Save, save as new contract. Save. And then we're going to close. Do you want to save changes? So last time I hit yes when I shouldn't have. I need to hit no. So this is the new contract. It's just the one page. And then this is the old contract, which is the two. Did it have three? I thought it had three. I don't remember. But that is the main thing on submitting. I'm sure there's a lot more that we could go over. Um, does anybody have any questions? Nope. So everybody knows how to submit it for review and um, the checklist is, uh, you know, anything that's required for the brokerage for a listing is going to be mandatory. You know, it'll have mandatory by it. If it's optional, you know, you might have it, you might not, but you would still attach it if you have it. But so this should tell you everything that you need to do should do um same thing with the we'll look at the template templates uh i just created the leases i know chad's been asking for leases and i just created the leases it has its own little checklist you know and it tells you what's mandatory and all, all the other things that you might have Documents and folders, that's where you would add the extra information that applies to that transaction template. And as you can see, um, leases are going to be different. Their documents are different. And then all the forms necessary for leases. <clears throat> but I think that covers it. Hopefully, um, you know, if you're going through it and creating a transaction and you get stuck, just give me a call. You know, I can I can walk you through it, but it's pretty simple. And I really I love the copy in the email and being able to forward the documents directly into the transaction. That's just really cool. You don't have to download it and then upload it. You can just forward it directly into the transaction. Well, this is being recorded so you can have access to it just to send out the recordings or we can have access to the recording. Yeah, last week I um, thought I recorded the Remind, but it wasn't recording, but this one is recording and it's like we're on an hour and 20 minutes now. But yeah, I'll send it out the link uh, for this week. I'll send it out with next week's invite uh, or I'll send it out early. Okay. But yeah. yeah, it takes doing it several times before you really get it all. So many details. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the more information you put in right at the front, um, the more complete your contracts are going to be. 
True. So when you're setting up, you know, like if you have a, a buyer now and you're setting up that other realtor's information, add her into your, into your, um, where's my contact? Add, her, add them into your contacts and fill in all their information. If it's an agent, fill in, um, yeah, personal, okay. Fill in the agent number and the address and uh, whatever else you can. You know, you want to have all that on there so it automatically populates with the forms. True. Yeah. So, but I will send out the link. Thank y'all for hanging in there with me. I know this one was a long one. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye.